intersection of good drinks, good music, and good times. This is Hops and Spirits Bar Conversations. I was joking with Owen beforehand that he's in the midst of a Canadian sandwich, which is is very fitting once you figure out where he's from as well. J.J. Wild just dropped uh, this past week. Owen's this week, next week, Nate Haller. Three great Canadian artists, and let's welcome in, like I said, one of those. He's a singer-songwriter. His latest single, Church, is out now. Owen Wrigling. What is going on, my friend? Thank you for having me today, and I'm looking forward to having a chat with you. No, I appreciate it, man. Uh, like I said, it, I, it's fun to get to talk to folks that you enjoy their music with, and you're one that I've, I've enjoyed uh, ever since finding you with Moon, Moonshines a, a little while back, and it, it's nice when things <laughs> work out and I can get you, on, get you on to chat. That's so cool, man. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate the compliment, and uh, yeah, I... Uh, Moonshines. How did you discover Moonshines? I'm curious. Spotify. I, I don't really. Like, eh? So, like I said, if you look at who's been on the show, Nashville's well represented, Texas is well represented, but apparently I got a thing for Canadian country artists because uh, <laughs> you know I've had a uh, oh who am I think Tanner Olson band. Uh, oh, oh my goodness, I'm drawing blanks. They just won an award. Ah. I, you know, it's really bad when you can't remember who's been on a show, but... Um, Want me to start rhyming off Canadian? Is it country music? Because I can, yeah, pretty, I can go. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Just name James them James Barker Band, Jay uh, Eagleson, uh, Coulter Wall, um, The Rec Laws. James Barker uh, Band was one, yeah. So it had James, James on, uh, Tanner Olsen, uh, let's see who else here, Del Barber... Uh, so I think what happened is, is you start listening to all those folks, and next thing you know... Canadian artists just keep popping in. Brett Kissel, uh, another one. Uh, so I don't know. I got a thing for Canadian country artists, you know. Well, perfect, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this show is called Bar Conversations. Well, it's it's daytime, and I'm not actually maybe going to pour too much of this. I got a little Blue Note Crossroads. Uh, I know you're probably behaving yourself since it's midday when we're talking, but um, what's your go-to drink these days? Oh, right now I will say I've been I've been on the tequila soda train. I, I love a good tequila soda. Um, that's that's basically what I've been drinking, man. That's my summer drink. Um, outside of that, you know, I enjoy uh, a beer. I like a Bud Light every now and again. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. I'm a simple dude. I just like you know keeping it pretty basic. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Now, with the tequila, is it just like Blanco, or do you get wild and go like Reposado Nieja, or just Blanco and keep no, it just Blanco. Just keep it simple, Blanco. It is. I really don't even care about the tequila. Like, I'll go to a as long as it's white tequila. I, I, that's Blanco, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, when I go to the bar or whatever, they ask me, I'll just say, you know, whatever you got, just make sure it's clear. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Also, you know, I want to say congrats on the marriage. How how is life going? How's married life? Thank you, man. Yeah, it's uh, very cool to be married. Um, been married for two weeks now, maybe just over over two weeks, and we've we've been traveling a lot since the wedding because I've been playing shows. Um, but we did get to spend a couple days relaxing. Um, we went glamping and we spent some time in a yurt and. Uh, it was very nice to, to kick back and kind of enjoy ourselves for a couple of days. But uh, honestly, it does feel different being married than, than you know, just being engaged and dating. So um, it's it's so cool. And we're looking forward to the future. And, um, you know, leading up to the wedding, people were saying, it's going to be the best day of your life. And I was kind of always just like, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, everybody says that. Like, you know, you have to say that it's your wedding. <laughs> um, and... And then and I actually, you know, got married and had the day, and it honestly was the best day ever, and I wish I could do it every day, but uh, unfortunately, I only get one wedding, so um, probably not going to get to do it again, but now I get to relive our day through all my friends that are starting to get, you know, engaged, and uh, I think I'm going to have a busy couple summers of weddings to go to, which I'm, I'm really excited for. Uh, I get to drink all their booze now because they emptied the bar at my wedding. And everybody had their shirts off. Everybody was dancing on the dance floor. Um, it was quite the party. For some reason, in in Mild May, or like in Bruce County, if you go to a Bruce County wedding, as soon as the band kicks off or the DJ starts, and you know people have had too much wine at dinner, all the guys and all my friends are out of shape. There's no reason for them to be taking their shirts off. But every single one of them, 
you know, one one guy will, will like rip a shirt off and then we have like the string lights over the dance floor and they'll throw it up and then it lands on the on the lights and every, the whole place starts cheering like it's so funny. And then next thing you know, there's 30 shirtless dudes out of shape dancing on the dance floor and everybody's like, I don't want to go near that. Um, Anyways, I feel like I'm going on a tangent right now, but uh, that's a little bit about going to a Bruce County wedding. <laughs> I love it. Well, I was going to say, it's very memorable, and that, that's, I think, what you hope for out of it, and for the right reasons. And and, and as you talk about getting to go to weddings, you know, if they do that, that uh, how long have you been married Dan, you know, song dance, you know, eventually you'll, you'll start working your way up. You know, right now you got kicked off early, but, you know, down the road you might yeah. be one of the last ones uh, standing. Yeah, man, that's right. I, uh, you never know. I mean, we've been together for eight years now um so we've been together for a long time but it feels like i say to people you know what does it feel like to be married and I honestly i've been married in my mind for a long time so this is just <laughs> like making it official I saw on paper i now wear a ring um but uh you know i've been married in my mind for a while and i think there's a song in there somewhere i have it in my in my lyric notes to write down or to write the song married in my mind but i'm just trying to figure out how how it should go um, I was gonna say so that. if anybody out there listening to this, you know, has an angle on that, hit me up. <laughs> I was gonna say that could be a pretty special song. And and speaking of your songwriting, did you really write your first song at age ten? Oh yeah, I wrote a very terrible song. <laughs> Probably even before that, that was when I started playing guitar. It was like age ten, and I was writing songs on my guitar. I have this song called Rock Star that I wrote at ten years old, and it's all about how I'm gonna be a rock star. And. uh Honestly, I kind of like the melody. I think it's cool. Maybe I'll I'll bring it back. But uh, before that, I, I wrote an even worse song. Um, at the time, I thought it was like the best song ever. It was going to win a Grammy and everything. Um, and my sister and I, we wrote it together. And she's not like in the music industry or she doesn't, you know, she's not involved in music at all at this point. But back then, she would write songs with me. And we had this little toy piano that we wrote songs on. Uh, so I've been writing songs for a long time and... <laughs> telling stories and uh yeah it's been a it's been a journey that's for sure <laughs> i was gonna say it, it's led you to some good places and and you speaking of that first guitar i did you get it out of a sears catalog is that where you got it because i didn't even know you know you're a little younger than i am i'm in my mid-30s you're in your mid-20s i didn't even know those things were still around then like when you would be looking at it <laughs> yeah i used to, i love the sears catalog my grandma would always have one and my parents would have one and we'd just, you know, you go through all the pages and you circle the stuff that you want. Um, and I circled the uh, black and white. It was like a Stratocaster mock kind of guitar. The brand was Nova. I think it was $100. And uh, yeah, I got it for Christmas and it was the best Christmas ever. I didn't get an amp though. So I just got the electric <laughs> guitar. So I was just playing it. Around the house, no amp. My parents were probably strategically not getting me an amp because they didn't want to hear that thing being blasted. Um, but I, after you know a lot of begging, eventually, I got the amp, and uh, the amp had a distortion mode on it. And I would just turn the distortion fully up and just rock out, blast it <laughs> in the house, and uh, yeah, that was kind of my first experience playing the guitar. And then I took lessons on that guitar. And, uh, yeah, the rest is sort of history, but thank you for the Sears catalog for, uh, providing me my first guitar. Oh, I love, I love that. I've heard of pawn shops, you know, a friend of a friend, but I don't think I've heard of getting your first guitar out of the Sears catalog. So I love, I love that. <laughs> In the Sears catalog, that's not even a thing anymore, is it? That's what I was thinking. I was like, I remember growing up with it. Cause I'm like you, you'd circle all the gifts you'd want for Christmas yeah. or your, your birthday. And, uh, but no, I, I love that. And you, you talk about you know, kind of growing up in that small town uh, in, Can in Canada, in Ontario, for those that may, may not be able to figure out on the map exactly how far in you got to go. What did that have on you growing up there in Canada, personally and musically? Um, I will say Canada is, I guess maybe people from Nashville and other places in America might not realize how country Canada actually is, but it's like, it's seriously country. Like, there's not a whole lot going on from, I mean, you go to Toronto, big city, it's like huge and kind of along the 401, which is the highway that runs west to east, um, right, like through Toronto and up to, you know, Ottawa and to Montreal and stuff. But if you go north of that, like you just drive from ever and there's nothing. And, and I'm kind of, 
I'm not that, you know, uncivilized. I, I live in a town called Mild May, which is two hours from Toronto. And it's like an hour and a half from any city. So we are kind of out there. But uh, we can, you know, we would take trips to the mall and, and drive the hour and a half. And it was like the best day ever when we got to go to the mall. Um, but, uh, you know, growing up there, town of a thousand people. I grew up on a farm. Our farm was just cash crop. We had 100 acres and uh, like 10 head of beef cattle. And I raised chickens growing up. So, I mean, I had dirt bikes and four wheelers, but like I wouldn't call myself a big farmer. I was just kind of living the country lifestyle, I guess. Um, and my parents still live there and uh, I get back there as much as I possibly can. But definitely growing up in the middle of nowhere with nothing really to do except for hang out with friends and make your own fun and when you turn 16 just drive around and basically just drive around uh i guess it kind of builds builds a little bit of character in a unique way and uh anybody from a small town kind of knows what it's all about but everybody knows everything and you kind of have to figure out who you are with with everybody sort of watching you and knowing what you're doing and for me i always had an, uh, a passion for music and at the time when i was like 10 uh, and when I was writing those first songs and, you know, 13, playing guitar, um, I didn't tell anybody that I was into music because none of my friends were into music. And it was kind of just something that I had for myself. Um, but I was like way too scared to ever show anybody a song or tell somebody that I was writing songs, let alone even just play guitar for somebody. I would I would not do that. Like so scared, hated school speeches and all like the I didn't like being in front of people. And I at that time, if you would have told me that I'd be playing shows for a living and having to like be on stage and be in front of thousands of people I, I would not believe you because I was terrified of that and it gave me extreme anxiety and sometimes it still does um but yeah I kind of kept it to myself and uh just because I didn't know what people would think of it because I didn't know anybody I didn't grow up with music in the house or I didn't grow up with you know friends who knew somebody that was a musician or anything like that so it was kind of a foreign thing um but I think that actually helped me because I would just spend so much time like out by myself just working on playing the guitar and, and writing. And I learned how to like be self-sufficient in that way and not need to rely on anybody else. Um, and then it just led me to, you know, eventually I played for the first time in front of my peers. It was at my high school graduation, grade 12 graduation. Some of the teachers had found out that I... Uh, was a guitar player, and they asked me to play guitar for this uh, for the teachers while they sang a song. <laughs> and the teachers sang "Humble and Kind" by Tim McGraw, and uh, I was playing guitar. And I I would love to actually see a video of it because I bet you I I hit a lot of wrong notes. But uh, that was sort of my first time playing in front of like all my peers and people. And like, okay, hey, Owen plays guitar, and then. After that, I was kind of like, all right, everybody, the cat's out of the bag now. Everybody knows. So then I started just singing and um, trying to write songs and, and share stories about how I grew up. And yeah, um, I think since then, that uh, that time of my life, like, like I said, I didn't know many people that were into music. But now I can kind of see it around where I grew up. I feel like I've inspired a new generation of young kids that is like, man, you can just play music and now everybody seems to like, you know, hit me up and I hear from parents and their kids like want to get a guitar because of me and whatever. And it's so cool. Um, and recently I've, the last year, I guess at Christmas and before that, a couple of the times I did like a school tour where I went around to all the elementary schools around where I grew up within like an, you know, a 40 minute drive kind of thing and set it up with the teachers and I'd go to the gym and I would just uh, play the kids a couple songs and answer questions and whatever. And they knew every single word to all of my songs <laughs> at every school that I went to. And they were screaming at the top of their lungs. And I got pictures after and I signed T-shirts. And it was, it was just so funny um, getting to kind of share that, that moment with them. But I, I hope that I inspired some, some youngins to want to make music. And maybe Bruce County will become a hot spot for country music. We'll see. I mean, you, you you never know. You know, kids nowadays they'll be growing up on uh, Owen Wrigling music. What what music did you grow up on that you were listening to back then at that age, or maybe even to now? <laughs> back then, 
well, if we're going way back to elementary school, before, I mean, I listened to country music, so my grandpa would have AM 920 on at all times in the on the kitchen radio. Like, the kitchen radio just did not turn off, ever. Even at night, they just go upstairs, music still playing downstairs. AM 920, and it was like, you know, Waylon Jennings, Merle Haggard, Johnny Cash, all the legends. My grandpa's favorite artist in the whole world was Willie Nelson, um, and he loved... His favorite song was Seven Spanish Angels by Willie Nelson and Ray Charles. And um, that was like my earliest memories listening to country music. But I mean, on my own time, when I got to plug my headphones into my Walkman and go on a road trip, I was listening to burn CDs that my parents had. And I was listening to, I had the, the CD wallet that I found in the closet and it just had, it probably had a hundred different CDs in there. And my parents, like, they didn't always listen to music and stuff, but they had a collection of CDs, I guess, from college or wherever. Over the years, they had collected these CDs. And uh, I vividly remember there being Steve Miller Band Greatest Hits, like the blue Steve Miller Band CD. Um, I remember there being a Green Day CD and a Weezer CD and an Eminem CD, um, Alan Jackson and, uh, you know, Kenny Chesney and, uh, I kind of had a wide variety of musical influences at a young age, and um, I would skip through and find my favorite songs and just listen to those on repeat. Um, and then, yeah, I guess I was kind of exposed to everything. And I honestly, I liked I liked rock music. I liked Green Day a lot. Um, and it wasn't until I discovered Eric Church and the song Springsteen, mm -hmm. which is the song that put me on to Eric Church. Um, that I sort of fell in love with the honestness and the realness and the storytelling that country music was. Um, because I was, I think it was 2011 when I discovered Springsteen. That would have made me, I guess, 13, right? Yeah, 13. And I was obviously, you know, too young to have had an experience with a girl at a music festival. But I felt like I had had that experience. It gave me like that nostalgic feeling at 13 that like, you know, I've been there um, and I loved that feeling. And uh, it kind of made me, you know, want to chase that and, and write songs and do that. So um, I guess I got to tip my hat to Eric Church and, and thank him for sending me down this path of trying to be a storyteller. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you're doing okay at it. I mean, if we're being honest, you, you're nominated for four CCMA awards, including Male Artist and Entertainer of the Year. What was it like when you got that 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 call or you know heard that you were up for four, four CCMAs? I mean, I sort of thought that they made a mistake when they announced that. Like, did they mean to put my graphic on the announcement, or is that, like... Um, especially the, you know, the entertainer one came out of the blue. There wasn't, I had no preparation for that announcement. It was just like, all of a sudden they had just posted it online and I was like, this is insane. Um, I was getting, you know, all kinds of calls and texts and friends and family were very excited. And obviously I was very excited too. Um, and I've been going to the awards in Canada for a long time and been watching them on TV for a long time. So it's it's very full circle and crazy and surreal to be alongside some of my you know favorite artists and and friends and and peers in this industry and people that I've looked up to for a long time. I do feel a bit of imposter syndrome, like being next to them and and you know like going on the red carpet and like people are interviewing me. Uh, like last year, I was on the red carpet as well, but just being there with like other artists that I look up to and it kind of feels like what the heck am I doing here sort of thing. But, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful. Well, and, and you also, one of those four that I didn't mention was songwriter of the year nomination for old dirt roads. What was it like for you when that song took off? Cause clearly I think that's kind of maybe what set you on this tra trajectory. Um, what, what was it yeah. like when that took off? Um, it's been such a long, slow process for that song. Um, I actually wrote it in 2019 and I wrote it, uh, you know, in my college dorm room and I was going to school for audio at the time and I learned how to produce music and I originally wanted to be a producer. Um, so then I recorded it on my own kind of in my bedroom and I used some of the, 
um, microphones and stuff from the school that I was going to. And I made this version of Old Dirt Roads and I, I put it out there using DistroKid, which is like a distribution platform that you can kind of do for independent artists. And uh, threw it out there. My cousin made the artwork for it. And, you know, it seemed to be one of those songs that people sort of connected with, especially in my area. And I would go play my bar shows and people would show up and shout out Old Dirt Roads. They'd be requesting it and... I always knew that there was something special about the song, but I was like, man, this is like, you know, this is crazy. People want me to sing this song. That was in, you know, 2019, 2020. And it was out for like, I guess it would, it would have been out for like three years, two and a half, three years. That version was out. And then I got my record deal. And um, we, you know, we took my version of it down and we recorded it with some, uh, you know, some great musicians and a producer here in Nashville and uh and then um you know put that version out and it was crazy that it kind of you know it got added to some big big playlists and people really connected with it and then it went on Canadian radio and did really well on there and yeah it just it still blows my mind the amount of love that, that song gets to this day is is very surreal but it has been a long process and I've I've been singing that song for like five years now, so it's cool that it's finally kind of caught its stride and it's doing its thing. I was gonna say, great, great songs uh, can can kind of you know carry on for for a while. And like I said at the top of the show, you know, uh, Moonshines was kind of what brought me to to your your page, your music. You know, that was another big hook for you. Um, what was it like for you to kind of make that song and kind of build off of you know old dirt roads and all these songs that you kind of had uh, built up? Yeah, Moonshines is a song that I wrote with my buddies Jesse Slack and Daryl Scott, and I'm actually I'm at Jesse's house right now. I'm in Nashville at the moment. Um, he's gracious enough to let me let me stay with him when I'm here. But uh, we were out uh, at a cottage on a writers retreat, and we read a lot of songs together. And um, you know, we may have been having a few beers at the time, and just kind of we wanted to write something that was fun and and you know kind of a little play on the way we were all raised in small towns um, in sort of the, you know, the backwoods kind of upbringing that we had. And we used uh, this kind of, kind of story of, you know, moonshine runners and then kind of played it into that a little bit. And uh, I think it's got such a cool vibe. It's, you know, it reflects the music that I really love and Eric Church's stuff specifically, like his Outsiders record was kind of an inspiration for that song. Um, and uh, I think, you know, it came out great. And it's, it's, it's playing on radio now, which is so cool. And it's cool to hear that that song is is the reason why, you know, we're on this call today. So I'm thankful for that. Uh, absolutely. And, and like I said, you also released another song just recently, Church. Uh, how did that song come to be? Because it's got a, got some fun play play on words in there and things like that. Yeah, I wrote that song with Jesse and Daryl as well. Um, and I think we were just, we were actually Zoom writing at the time. We were all at our houses and we were just on there like we wrote one song and then this was the second song we wrote that day on zoom um and obviously i you know i'm a huge eric church fan and uh we wanted to find a way to kind of incorporate that sentiment without being too on the nose with it so i mean if you're not an eric church fan you don't know his music then you can listen to the song as if it's a song about me, you know, finding myself through music um, without having any idea that it's an Eric Church thing. Okay, I've sent it to people. Like when I first wrote it, I sent it to a bunch of people. And the amount of people that came back, like, oh, it's a beautiful song, man. Like, this is about, you know, this and that. And, and then I'm like, you don't know, do you? Like, And they're like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, like I, I dropped like, you know, there's like 22 Eric Church titles in the verses of, of these, of this song. And, um, it's just a song about me sort of when I'm down and out or, you know, need a lift sometimes, you know, there's times I need, I need Jesus and there's times I need church. And it's kind of the play on like, you know, sometimes, sometimes I do need a little bit of Jesus maybe. And there's other times where I just need a, a good Eric church song to, to kind of get me there. So, yeah. Like I said, I, I love kind of that, that play on words and what you're able to do there. And 
And you know, you know, for you when you're kind of writing songs and, and putting that out there, is it from experiences? Is an idea just like that kind of to have a little fun? How does all that work for you? Um. Yeah, it's different every time. It's you know, it depends on on the mood, I guess. I don't really know how songs come to be. It's it's kind of magic sometimes, and sometimes they're just meant to be and the right people get in the room together or I write it by myself and it's like where did that just come from like I can feel it inside though sometimes you can feel it bowling up like I have something to say right now I don't know what it's gonna be but I can feel that I have something to say I'll grab a guitar and I'll just start whatever comes to my mind it just comes out and next thing you know I'm working on something and it leads to the next idea then oh this this is going here and then it's like hey I have the perfect title for that you know this feeling that I have right now and that's how I would write by myself a lot of times um, but when it comes to, you know, other, other people and getting in the room with a couple different writers, it usually starts with, what are we trying to say here? And what's the, what's the title going to be here? Where's, where's this song? What are we trying to write to? What is the, you know, ending of the chorus or what is the hook, I guess? Um, and it's a great way to write as well. Uh, I feel like I'm a little less seasoned in that style of writing. So when I get in the room with Nashville guys, it, it usually comes together, but, uh, yeah, I just try to write feelings and try to write things that I can connect with because I know that other people can connect with them as well if, if I feel something. I was going to say, I mean, the fact that people uh, on, on church took a different thought, I mean, they, they see themselves in songs and maybe it takes them a different route, but it, it's it's cool to see you your formula. And like I said, I think it's working pretty well. And uh, one of my favorite questions to ask everyone, you know, always ask at the top, what's your favorite drink? That this is one of my most favorite, and it always gets an interesting reaction. Is what's your favorite song right now to perform on stage? Um, I would probably say I have a song called "In My Head Again," and it is very fun to perform on stage. Uh, we have a little. We just added a medley that we do in the middle of the song, and actually, we we bounce between. The kind of the records I was telling you about, like Steve Miller Band, Alan Jackson, Green Day, Weezer, um, and Eminem, to be to be honest. And uh, it always kind of gets the crowd into it. And this song is just so fun to perform in general. That chorus is like uh, easy to sing along, and it's fun because my drummer is absolutely rocking out. My guitar players have their you know amps on ten, and we just have a lot of fun with it. I love. It. I see. There's so many that are like that. That they can do a little bit extra with it on a live performance. And I'm guessing that has to be fun for you when you can kind of add a little spin for for those that get to come out and see you. Exactly. Yeah. It's always fun building a show and and seeing what people connect with, and then just going from there. And the more shows you play, you kind of realize what works and what maybe doesn't, and where we can, you know where we can build and where we can we can grow the live show. So that's something that just kind of came out of nowhere after just telling the story that I told you of like, I listened to all kinds of music growing up and I wasn't just country. Like it was everything. That's what has inspired me to make the music that I make. I'm trying to make music that I would want to listen to. And that might sometimes be a little less country than others because I listen to everything and that's just naturally what I would want to make and I'm going to continue to make that and that's you know that's something that I wanted to get out to people before I would play that song and then we were on the bus on tour in May just kind of talking like well it'd be kind of cool if we use some of those references that you use that you you know tell people every night and we kind of put them in this song and, and then we kind of built it out from there so it's like one of those things that just or organically over time kind of progresses and builds and, and all of a sudden next thing you know you have like a seven minute moment that happens it's like so cool i love it i love it you gotta love how things come together and you know like i mentioned church is out out now um what else can folks expect from you the rest of this year and then on into 2025 anything fun you can let us in on that won't get you in trouble <laughs> i will say uh we have I think 45 for 44 more shows until the end of November. Like we're, our last show is December 6th. Um, hint, if you go to my website, there's no shows for on December 6th on there. So we may have an announcement coming very soon uh, for something exciting that's happening at the end of the year. Um, but we're playing all over the States uh, mostly for the rest of the year. And then, and then maybe a few shows in Canada after that. So um, we got some new music coming out later in the year bunch of shows we're going to be around um i guess just you know stick around and we'll see you there
<laughs> I love it. A, a good tease and not getting yourself in trouble. And uh, folks, if you haven't, like I said, give Owen a listen. You, you, will, you will love what you hear. It's, it's great music. And, man, I can't wait to see what you put together next and, and where you're headed. Awesome. Thank you so much for the time today, man. Appreciate it. Find more from Hops and Spirits at hopspirits.com. Thanks, everybody. Bye.